Hello and welcome to this Cartoon Animator 5 tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at free bones and how you can set things up inside of Cartoon Animator if you need to and how you can actually set them up inside of your vector image editor depending on what you've been given. So if you've literally just got a still image you can actually still do quite a lot inside of Cartoon Animator but if you've actually got vectors or EPSs or something like that you can actually set them up and actually show you how to do that so that it works and will be recognized when you bring it inside of Cartoon Animator. So to start off with I'm going to work with a PNG. So I've got a PNG just to show you and it's uh, an articulated arm. So there is an articulated arm and I'm going to bring this articulated arm in as a prop because obviously it's not a free bone actor as such it is isn't a, it is just a prop but we can still add bones to it because when you click prop it does say, is it a rigged prop or a static image? Well, we're obviously going to be going for a rigged prop. So if I click OK, in it comes as a rigged prop. And then it goes straight into composer mode. And we're ready to add bones because it needs rigging. So what we've got is a single layer inside of here. And inside of that, there's just the image. Well, in fact, that'll be the, the origin here. OK, so there is this PNG that's been brought in. But I want to animate it. And I can add bones to do that. So to add bones. With the item obviously it's fully selected you can just click add bone and then you can go in and say right well what do i want to do i want this arm this robotic arm to be animating so i'm just adding the bones into the robotic arm and i'll just do it to this point here i won't go any further and then you can just right click or hit escape to get out of the bone creation mode now we're creating bones the individual dots by the way are the bones so it's one two three four bones and connections between them. And this has formed what's called an inverse kinematic link. So this bone is connected to this bone is connected to this bone is connected to this bone. So if I animate this bone, these bones will move with it. So it's called inverse kinematic. So I'm not going to go into great detail, but that's that's basically what it is. Now I want to animate them. Notice you've got a preview button. So if I go preview, I can see what's going to happen. And if I come over here and animate that, oh, ah, okay. The whole thing moves. What about this one? Um, if I rotate, oh, we've really got this very bendy look. I'm not very keen on this bendy look. If I click at the end here, you see that it can get pretty distorted pretty quickly. So you can just turn off preview and that'll reset the whole thing. What you can do if you're unhappy about the way it's working and you want to help get rid of distortion, you can click show wireframe and it shows you the wireframe, the mesh that it's using to distort the image. And obviously there's a lot you can do with that. So for example, you could change the density. Maybe take the density up quite a long way. You can change the alignment, okay, giving yourselves a lot more triangles. And in doing that, that gives you smoother animation. You can also expand or contract. And if I contract it and bring it back to pretty much the edge of the actual shape that's come in, you'll see that that's given me a much, much better result. Okay, so let's preview that. Let's turn off the wireframe and preview that. Okay, so click preview. And then if I click here, you'll see that's mm, it's not really doing what I want it to do. Let's try that one. Well, it's not distorting in quite the same way, but yeah, I don't really want this rubber band look. I want these to be sort of metallic robot arms and not sort of bendy pipe arms. So I'm going to undo the preview and show you how you can actually adjust this directly inside of Cartoon Animator. OK, so at the moment you've got a layer, which is the image layer, with the bones associated with it. OK, so we want to be able to animate the bones. So let's say I just want to have this bone separate from everything else, or maybe this chain. So to make that happen, what I need to do is take a copy of the image and apply it to that bone. So you can see the bone is selected over here. This is bone one. This is this button here. So I need to get a copy of this image exclusively onto this bone. And the way you do it is by clicking this button at the bottom, which duplicates the layer and associates it with that bone that's selected. So if I click duplicate layer, it says successfully added layer. Do you wish to edit mask for the newly added layer? And you should click yes, because you need to make selections about what you're going to keep and what you're not going to keep. OK, so on this particular arm, what do I want and what don't I want? Now, a word of warning, the, the brush and the eraser tool kind of are actually the opposite if, sort of logically, because the brush is going to get rid of bits in the layer and the eraser tool is going to add things back in. 
Okay, so if I've got this selected, I'm getting rid of bits that I don't want. So clearly what I don't want in this particular instance, you can see you've got the size of the brush, the hardness and strength, which I'm going to leave at 100%. I don't want this. So if I sort of do that with a nice big brush, say so I don't want that. No, no, no. Now, if I want to get in closer here, notice I've got plus, 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 hand tool, move it across, and I can still go plus, plus, plus if I want to get right in change the brush size to something a bit more manageable. And then I can come in here, oops, still got the hand tool, get the brush, there we go. And I can come in and do a better job. I'm not going to do a brilliant job, I'm sorry, but you know, tutorial, there isn't time to do a fantastic job. Just gonna sort of do the basics. It, um, yeah, this is for working with items that, that you can do quickly, um, but you, you would need to zoom in and do a better job than I'm doing here if you're gonna do this yourself. Now to get back, all you need to do is shut down the mask editor, which is just click the X. There we go. Mask editor shut back, and now we are back. And I've got this layer, and I need to click preview again. And I can preview that bone. And, oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, it's independent. Ah, I've still got stuff underneath. And that's because I've still got a full image layer. So I clearly need to mask things out from the original image layer as well. So I'm going to turn off preview. I'm going to go to the original image layer, make sure the image layer is selected, and click this button here, which is the mask editor. And when I click that, it says, all right, Andrew, what do you want to get rid of? Well, I want to get rid of everything, really, so I'm going to accept for the wall mount in this case. So I'm going to go from there, and I'm just going to get rid of all of this stuff. Okay, I think that'll do the trick. There's overlap, it's not going to matter for this bit here, that's why I'm leaving it. So click that. And now we can come back and do a preview. Click on the bone to try it out. And there you go, nothing underneath it. Uh, the edges aren't brilliant where I didn't do a fantastic job, but you know, you get the idea. The image at the back hasn't got a bone or anything associated with it, so that's just an image at the back that's not going to move and it's not going to be affected at all. Great. Now. If that's all I wanted to do, and I just wanted to move this particular arm by one bone, that would be very straightforward. But if I want to move this bit and this bit separately, there's a little bit more involved, because you need to apply a, a, a copy of the image to every bone that you're going to associate with it and get rid of the bits that you don't want duplicated. Okay, so let's unpreview that. Let's select the bone that we want, so this bone here, which is connected to this bone here, so we want this section here. It's not got any image associated with it, so therefore we need to click the Duplicate Layer button. And it says, yep, I've done that. Do you want to edit it again? Yes, I do. So back into the Mask Editor. It'll give it a minute to catch up with what we previously did. Now notice I've got this one here, Show Reference Points, which is just showing where the bones are. So basically it's saying this is your inverse kinematic link. Notice there's not a reference point back here because it's not part of the link, it's just this bit here. However, the inverse kinematic range from bone one is still active. So if I was to move bone one, it would actually well, move this bone, it would still move this bone and this bone and this bone. So don't worry about losing your link, you're not going to lose your link. But from this point forwards, that's the link. So what do I want to see and what don't I want to see? Well, clearly, I don't want this. Again, I'm just going to do a very basic job. I don't want that. Okay, so I've still got this associated with the arm. Okay, so let's get rid of that and have a little look and see what difference that's made. So again, I'm going to click Preview, and I'm going to... Oh, but I've still got stuff underneath. Why have I still got stuff underneath? Well, it's because the previous bone, bone one, had the whole inverse kinematic link still attached to it. So what I'm actually going to end up doing is I'm going to have a separate layer for just that bone, a separate layer for just that bone, and a separate layer for just that bone. And if I did these two hands separately, I'd have a separate layer for that and a separate layer for that. That's how it's actually going to have to end up in the end. So I'm going to turn off preview. And I'm going to go back to uh, the previous layer, which is that one there. And I'm going to go back to the mask editor. And I'm going to say, what do I need to keep in this one? I just need to keep that arm. I don't need to keep this arm. So I'm going to get rid of all of that. So that bone, and the previous one, and this bone is just going to be this one. So I'm going to click off, come back, and just show that it's working. So come back to preview, click on this bone, and you'll see that's absolutely fine. 
Obviously, it's not very well edited, but you get the idea. So this bone is separate. That bone is separate. Everything is now much more robotic, and it can be moved as a robot arm. If I want to do this bit, though, I'm going to have to... This bone mask that bit out, and this bone has got to have its own copy of the layer associated to it. So I'll do it one more time just to show you the process. So I'm going to come and choose the next bone, which is that bone there. And I'm going to associate a copy of the image or a duplicate of the layer by doing that. It says, do you want to edit it? Yes, I do. Give it a minute to catch up. Boom. I don't want this bit associated with it. So I'm going to, again, do a, the most basic job possible, which is just doing that. And I'm going to click OK. But we're going to have a problem again because, obviously, the previous layer has still got it associated. So if we actually preview it, I'll just show you again. And I choose that bone there and I move. It's OK. But if I choose this bone here, there's a copy underneath. OK, so it's all to do with this one here, which is the previous one. OK, so I'm going to unpreview it. And I'm going to open this layer up in the mask editor. I click in the mask editor here. And I need to get rid of this section down here, don't I? So I'm just going to get rid of that, which is what's causing me the problem. Shut down the mask editor. And then let's just do one more preview. So this last section down here. There we go. So I can now move this however I like, and I've got a nice robotic look. Um, this is a still image, so bear in mind this is a PNG. Okay, this was just done with a PNG. So that's how you can use the mask editor inside of Cartoon Animator 5 to be able to do your animation. And again, you could do more down here if you had more bones. But that's how I can build something up if all I've got is a PNG. However, if I have an EPS or a, or a Illustrator file or an Affinity Designer file, I'm going to do this in Affinity Designer, then you're going to find it a lot easier to separate things out. But you also need to know the process of doing that. And I'll show you that in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.